Okay, we're starting the live stream this morning. I apologize to those of you who were out there waiting. We had momentary technical difficulties, and hopefully those are passed, and um, we can get the, the PowerPoint up and running. And so um, bear with me just one more second while I get the Chrome, the PowerPoint set up. Yesterday we talked about the, um, the whole issue of project um, planning and setting up a project plan. Yesterday when we were doing that, I was demoing it as an administrator, and so I kept demoing the fact that every time I opened it, all tasks opened up. Um, this morning I went and I created a new project, and I added myself as a, um, as a translator so that I can, oh, I know there's no visual on the screen, sorry Steve, thank you for being on top of it so that, uh, let's see, let's get the screen capture, there we go. Okay, so now we got visual on the screen, thank you. This is why I have people watching out for me because if I tried to do this totally myself, it would get lost. So, um, today we're talking about interface and setup, but I had, we, we, we talked about how this thing looks, and I want to just really quickly show you one more time kind of how this looks after I get Chrome set up. So we're going to switch into preventer, presenter mode so that we can have Q&A. If you're out there in the, the world, you can either Q&A through the live feed or you can Q&A through the, through the, um, the Goo GL um, page that's now listed. So when I'm in Paratext 8 and I have a project, this project that I have up on the screen now, I am a translator on. I am not the administrator and if I, if I go to project user roles and permissions, we can verify that fact that Phil Lacrone, I'm not Phil Lacrone, I'm Phil Lacrone 2. Okay? Phil Lacrone is the administrator and there are three translators on here Notice that nobody has editing rights, okay? So we've, we've shut down editing rights here for everybody. No, has, no one has editing rights. And so a plan has been set up. How do I know a plan has been set up on this project? Because there's, there's an icon, okay? So very quickly I can see, okay, yeah, I've got a plan. Again, I'm the translator. So when I click this icon, what I see is for the current book, the tasks that I have to work on. And the only task that's assigned here is a team task. Now notice we, we were talking about team didn't assign editing privileges, but it does show up in my tasks. Okay, so I'm a part of the team, I'm a part of the team, and it shows that there is a project task that's incomplete, the, the complete tra translation brief. So as part of the team, I'm going to see this task, and it's going to tell me. Now, this says current book, and I was in the book of Galatians. I don't have any other tasks in the book of Galatians. Something that I did not mention last, yesterday that's very important, and it's almost extremely easy to miss. If you look down in the lower, right, lower left corner of this, you see a little link. Previous. Matt. What that tells me is that, there, that I do have tasks in a previous book. Okay, did you catch that? Okay, I may not have tasks here, or I may have tasks here, but I also have tasks in a previous book, Matt, and if I click that, now it takes me and it shows me what tasks I have. Now, notice on the bottom of the screen there are no previous, so basically this is the only book where I have tasks assigned to me. Okay, but if I had other books assigned, if I had other books, if I had Mark assigned to me, then in the lower right hand corner I'd see next Mark. And so I could flip through looking for the books that are assigned to me. I don't have to go up here to, I don't have to go up here and say, well, okay, what about, no, don't have anything in Galatians. What about Titus? No, don't have anything in Titus. What about, as, no, don't have, but down at the bottom of the screen, I'm either going to show previous book that I have or next book that I have, okay? 
So we didn't talk about that yesterday, but that's a really important concept to grasp so that I, as a translator, when I open this up, I can say, okay, well, what do I have, what do I have in this other book? Oh, Matthew, Matthew, it's giving me some tasks to do. And again, as we went through yesterday, as I mark things complete, then that's going to change who has the editing rights and such. Can there be both previous and next? Yes, yes. So, so if, if I had taken the time this morning at home <laughs> to actually do assignments in four or five books, then you would see previous, next, 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 you know, and I could just, you know, but it's only going to show me, you know, it's going to show me previous. So if I had, if I had Matthew and then I had Psalms and I had Genesis, it would be previous Matthew, okay, and it just take me, you know, I just keep going forward. Jim? Are there dates in the plan that, that determine whether that's previous or next? Or that... No, I, it, it's not, I, I, it's, I think it's canonical. Okay, the previous. It's canonical. Canonical, canonical books. Right. So when I'm in, no, no, no. So, so I'm in. So I, yeah. Okay. So it's not, it's not, it's not time tasks that I'm working on. It's book, books. So, so when it says, sorry. So when, so when I was in Galatians, or you know, if I'm in Mark, if I'm in Mark, it says down here previous Matthew. Okay. So it's you know, so. So, so if I, if I go to Micah, now it says next, ah. Matthew, and so it's on this side. Okay. Previous, yeah, time. No, no, we're not. No, we're not talking about time. We're talking about the cano- next canonical book. Okay. Next, because because what this what this chart is showing me is my tasks filtered by a book. Okay. Yes. It's showing me my tasks filtered by a book. So as I work through that, it's gonna. It's going to, going to get me that. So, all right, we we comfortable there? I just wanted to point that out because that that to me was a, a feature that I hadn't really shown. Now again, Lewis was bringing up this issue of the the concern that all the translators could see everybody's tasks. Of course, there are three other translators. I can't click, and there's no button there to say, "Let me see Harold's." tasks. I can it be intentional and go to all tasks. I mean, you know, and if I go to all tasks, then I can see everything that has to be done. But in a, in a way, this to me, well, again, and, and maybe this is a cultural thing. I, we'd have to discuss this. But here, I, it's not like I'm looking and saying, okay, well, yeah, so-and-so hasn't done all their tasks yet, because I'm not looking at all their tasks, really. I'm just I'm seeing kind of the whole global picture I have to do. But you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional to get to this. And so I would expect that the normal place the translator is going to go is they're just going to open this up. It's going to say, here's what you have to work on. And that's what they're going to do, hopefully. If you're in a culture where it's not appropriate to be looking at somebody else's work and saying, hey, you haven't done your job, then don't go look at all tasks. Okay? Okay. But you can. You can go say, what's, what's the team supposed to be doing? Where are we at? And that's going to show you, if again, if I'm in a, book, in, a, I'm in a book where things are assigned, then when I go to all tasks, I can see that. Why is it unassigned? Oh, I'm in, I went to current book. Okay, so when I'm in Matthew, when I'm in Matthew, then it shows me who the assignments are and, and, and where all the assignments, you'll notice there's a bunch of different people assigned, a bunch of people different assigned to different things. This, again, is a, it's, it's going to take work on the part of you, the consultant administrator, to get your project, help your team set up the project. So you want to make sure it's set up well so that the team knows what they're working on. We're, we're always in this point, we're always looking at a book. So, so again, you've got to keep in mind that if I'm looking at this book, I'm looking at, I'm looking at Matthew, and things are assigned to me in Matthew. 
Okay, normally, it's like I might be assigned to things in Matthew, and somebody else is going to be assigned to things in Mark, and somebody else is going to be assigned to things in Luke. And so when I open up my tasks and I go to my book, I'm going to see my assignments. And if I switch to all tasks, I'm, not going, to, I'm going to see my assignments because they're assigned to me, typically. Okay? And if I go to another book, then I can say, okay, these things are assigned to that person. But I have to be intentional to go there, and I'm not clicking on... I'm not, never clicking on their tasks. There's no, no option for me to say, show me Sam's tasks. It's always show me the entire picture of everybody's tasks. Okay, or show me my tasks. Okay, so let's, let's close that. And we're going to, I'm going to get rid of this project that I created just because I don't want it to clutter up my world. This is a project that I created, and you'll notice that right now it's on my computer, it's on the send receive server, and it's registered. If I click on delete this project, I, I can't delete the registration because who registered it? The administrator. And I'm just the translator. So I can't delete this from the server. I can't delete this from the registration. I can't do that because I'm not the translator, I'm not the administrator. But I don't want to be on this project anymore. I'm, you know, I want to be off this project. So I can delete it from my computer, and there's an option down here at the bottom that says also remove me from this project. Okay. So when I click OK, again, it's, you know, are you sure it's also accessible to Phil Lacrone on this computer, because Phil Lacrone was on this computer. Do you want to delete it? Yes. You sure you want to delete it? <laughs> Are you really sure you want to delete it? Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I am. So what it's doing is it's deleting this project from my computer. It's going up to the registry and it's saying, okay, Phil Lacrone's no longer Phil Lacrone 2 is no longer in this project. Okay. So Phil Lacrone still has it on his computer. The other team members still have it on their computer. It's still on the send receive server. It's still registered. I'm just not a part of this project anymore. So I can do that, be very careful, okay? Because now if I say, oh, I was on that project and I just took myself off of it, what would I need to do? What's the right word? I need to communicate, thank you. But I could do that by contacting my administrator, thank you. Yes, I need to communicate back to the administrator and say, hey, I accidentally deleted myself from the project. Could you put me back on? And he would do a send receive, and then it would show up in my send receive folder again, and I could put the project back on my computer. Okay, so all is not lost. Okay, I can't, I can't totally wipe out this project for everybody at that point. Okay, but I can so you get off of it. Off the I did take myself off. But you won't stay off. It will stay off if the administrator doesn't put me back on. So I'm off. I'm off the project. When I go to File, Send, Receive, Projects, that project will no longer show up in my list of projects. That project is gone. That project that I just deleted myself from is gone from my list because I took myself off of it. And if the administrator goes and does work and does a Send, Receive, I won't get it because I'm off the project. I'm out of the registry. But, but if the administrator goes to user roles and permissions and adds me back into the project, if, if there's an intentional process of putting me back in the project, then I would be back in the project. Okay, so, so I have this ability. This is one of the things that was extremely frustrating in Paratext 7.5 because you'd say, somebody added me to their project as an observer, as a consultant, and now I've got... I've got 15 projects that I'm on, and I really don't want to be on these projects. And I asked the administrator to take me off, but they didn't do it or something. So now you can just say, take me off the project and be out. Once it's all migrated to eight. Okay? So, so this ability to take yourself off the project exists in Paratext 8. There, we digressed for 20 minutes. Let's go back to our 
thing. So setting up Paratech, starting a project. Um, we had three days of what's new in Paratext, registration and migration, and project planning. Those are the big, big things in Paratext 8. Now, we're going to take a breath, and we're going to really kind of go back and start at the beginning. This, for some of you, you're going to go, okay, wait a minute. We're, we're going way low here. Some of you are going to say, oh, good. Now we're going to find out how to do things in Paratext. Some of you are going to still say, okay, you're going too fast. Slow down. Hopefully, we'll, we'll catch everything. Some of the things we're going to talk about this morning are advanced. And so, again, if you say, okay, that's way too advanced for me, just watch. Okay, you don't have to do it. But we want to go through and talk about this. So again, the first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to spend some time setting up the interface. We talked about interface on Monday, but we want to um, kind of continue this discussion. So what makes up the Paratext? This is a quiz from Monday, for those of you here Monday morning. What makes up the interface in Paratext? Windows. Windows. The language of what? Well, I mean, like on my project, when I'm looking at my project, does that language make up the interface in my project? No. Which language? Of the? The user. The menus, right? Like English. OK. So, if, if, so what the menus, you know, that, the menus, the icons, the, the windows, all of that part that I, as a user, interact with, that's the interface. OK? That's the interface. OK? So what is an interface? I pulled this off of what is COM. A user interface consisting of the sets of dials, knobs, operating system commands, graphical display formats, and other devices provided by a computer or a program to allow the user to communicate and use the computer or program. A graphical user interface, GUI, provides its user with more or less picture-oriented way to interact with technology. A GUI is usually a more satisfying or user-friendly interface to a computer system. It's the stuff that the user interacts with. Okay? That's what the interface is. So when we talk about working with the interface, we're talking about getting it together in a way that we can work with it. How do we work with this thing that's on the screen okay, for us? How do we work with this? Okay? So it's how we interact with the program. Okay? And we talked about on Monday the fact that Paratext is smart with its menus, right? The menus, the menus change depending on, you know, where you're at. Okay, so we, we, so we talk about that. If I'm on, if I'm in a project window, or if I'm in a list window, or if I'm in notes, the menus change, and that, that again, that just throws so many people because they say, well. I can't see the checking menu. You're telling me to click on the checking menu, and there is no checking menu. And it's because you're not in your project. And so if you're in your project, then you see the checking menu. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, so what do you mean the menus are smart? Okay, so close all the windows in your paratext. Make sure everything's closed so you don't have any windows open. So you have paratext, you have no windows, no projects, nothing's open. So go ahead and, so we're going to just close, we're going to just close those down, okay. So how many menus are there right now in Paratext? Okay. How many icons follow after the verse reference? When you see the verse reference, how many icons follow after the verse reference? Okay, two inactive, two active. Okay. Now, open, open the ZZ Test 99 project. That we had that ZZ Test 99 project. So we're going to go to File, Open, Open Project. And when it comes up, we're going to look for the ZZ Test 99. There it is, right there. Okay. 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 Now, when the ZZ Test 99 project's open, can you kind of keep an eye on Carolyn? 
when the ZZ Test 99 project's open, how many menus are there? Okay, I hear nine. Do I hear ten? Eight. Okay, how many items are visible under the view menu? There's a bunch of things. Okay, you don't have to count them all. How many, how many icons are there after the verse? Okay, so again, what we want to keep track of is, is that these menus change. Okay, the last thing we want to do, open a list window. To open a list window, to open a list window, you can just go to tools, go to tools, and list. And that will open a list window. So you go to the tools menu and go to list, and that'll open a, a list window. Okay. So how many file menus are now available in, or now visible in Paratext? How many menus are visible that say file? How many places can you see file? Two. Two, because there's one for the main menu and there's one for the list window. Okay. Um, how do they differ? Open, open, one, open one, then open the other. How do those two menus differ? Click on one so you see what's in that list, and then click on the other one. How do they differ? No, 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 cancel that. Okay, so just click file. Okay, so that's one. No, now, now what's under that? What's under this file list? This file? Okay, that's that file. Now click this one. Okay, not, okay, I don't want you to open anything. I just want you to, okay. So... So you see two different lists, two different file menus, and they do different things, okay? So again, as we talk about interface, as we think about interface, one of the things that sort of you need to become aware of and comfortable with is there are different menus, and so you can click different places, they're gonna give you different information, okay? So when we say, when we say go to the list menu and click on file, that would mean, you know, open that list and click on that file menu, as opposed to go to the file file. So we want to keep track of where we are. Okay, so what are smart menus? Smart menus are menus that basically open based on where you are and what you're doing. Okay, smart menus open based on where you are what you're doing at that time. Basically where your cursor lands, where you've clicked on. Where you've clicked on. Okay. So well that's interesting. Oh. That's interesting. Okay. All these menus are confusing. Can I just have a simple interface? Warning, warning, advanced topic. So if you're not comfortable, just watch, okay? But can I have a simple interface? And the answer is yes. How many of you are aware that since Paratext 7 point probably zero, there's been an option to create a simplified interface in Paratext? Anybody aware of that? Neil is. Okay, Steve's aware. Okay, Paratext has almost always had an option in 7, Paratext 7, has always had an option to create a simplified interface that would allow us to not have as many menus. Okay. Proceed with caution here because you can modify the menu from any team member. So when we, as I do this, what I do can modify a menu for other people. So I'm going to go through this process for you. You watch, and then we'll do this together. So in Paratext, under Tools, Advanced, there's an option to 
Simplify paratext menus. Okay, so I would suggest you don't do your have your hand on the mouse. I suggest you kind of watch what I'm doing so that you you can see this process, and then we'll go back and we'll do it together. So there's an option to simplify the paratext menus. And when I click on that option, it brings up a menu that allows me to choose who am I going to simplify the menu for. And when I click that list, what I will see is the people with whom I am currently sharing projects. Okay. So the people who are on projects with me that I'm sharing, I will see there. Okay. I want to work on Phil Lacrone 2. I want to customize the menu. Well, actually, I'm going to customize the menu for Usuario because nothing's been done there. So I'm going to customize the menu for Usuario because Usuario was, was just feeling overwhelmed because the menu was too much. Okay. So I'm going to customize this for this person. Okay, I click and choose that, and then I have to choose Customize. And when I choose Customize, it opens up and gives me a little bit of an instruction down here. Okay, customizing the menu for Usario to Paratex 4. Yellow background, the command is always visible. Red background, the command is not visible to the user. And you right click to toggle which commands are visible. Okay. If I click OK, it means I'm done. Okay, so you don't want to click OK yet because I haven't done anything. Okay, so notice up at the top that there's some yellow menus. In other words, I cannot, if I right click that, I cannot take the file menu off. I mean, I have to leave the file menu there. But if I click that menu, you'll see what can be turned off. So I can, for instance, turn off the new program, new project. I could turn off the open project even. Okay. Well, I want him to, I want him to be able to open a project, so I'm going to toggle that. Whoops. I toggle by not clicking, but by right clicking. So I right click, and now open project is going to be something that he can do. Okay. I want him to be able to send receive. I want him to be able to open the notes, so I'm going to right click that so he can open notes. Okay. But I don't, want him to, I don't want him to be restoring a project from file. I don't want him to go restoring files. I don't want that to happen. And so I go through each menu and I make my changes. Now, I want you to notice something. We said menus are smart, right? So if I go to the edit menu, I only see that. What do I have to do to be able to see the full menu? I have to have a project open. So I'm going to go to File, Open Project. And notice these menus still work normally. So I'm going to open my project. Okay, Now I can look at Edit. I, I don't want him to be able to do a replace. But, I, but find, I can't turn off. I can't turn off find. He's got to be able to do find. Okay. Under view, I don't want him to go into the preview mode because if he's in preview mode, he can't edit. So I don't want that. I don't want basic mode. I don't want um, unformatted mode. All I want are these two views. I don't want him to show consultant notes. I don't want him to get mixed up highlighting the rendering. So I can go through and turn off any menu item that I don't want. Okay. The administrator does this. Okay. And just a review. Clicking turns off. Right clicking turns on. Right. No. Right clicking turns on or off. Right clicking. Whichever one you have. To right. Right. So. So. Okay. So if you left, if you left click, if you left click, then you can see all of the options. If you right click, you can turn it off. So with insert, I want him to be able to insert a note. So I'm going to. So I'm going to turn notes on. Notice that if I turn off the entire insert thing, then I can't turn I can't turn off insert and turn on insert notes. Okay. So if I want to be able to insert notes, I got to turn that off and then turn everything else off. Okay. 
even if an option is gray, I can still turn it off so that if it becomes available, it would be, be off. So the only thing they can do is insert a note now. Okay, under tools, we've turned off everything. Under project, I don't want them to get into the progress charts. I don't want them to get into the project plan. I don't want them messing with the, can the keyboard, the cannon. Um, I don't even want them messing with, I don't want them changing anything on there. Okay, so I'm going to turn everything else except assignments and progress off. Again, what you turn off obviously depends a lot on what you want that person to be able to do or for you to be able to do because you could be doing this for yourself as well. Okay, so I'm going through this process of looking. I want them to be able to do the spell check current book and display spelling, but I don't want them to work on the markers inventory. I don't want them to work on those. And I don't even want them to run the basic checks because that's going to be done through the plan. Okay, So I don't want them doing those things. In the window mode, I want them to use stack three column. I don't want them to use the other stacks. So I'm going to turn those off. In help, I don't want them to report a problem or to make a suggestion if there's a problem report. So I go through those menus. But again, remember the menus change depending on what windows open. So I would want to open up, for instance, a list and look and see if there's any other item here that I need to turn off for the list. I've got the list, these menus now, so I could turn these off as well in the list. Okay. I also can turn off icons. So for instance, if I said I really don't want them to get into the Hebrew and Greek, I could right click on it and turn it off. If I don't want them to use Paratext Live, if I don't want them to show global notes, I can turn various icons on and off. And then there's also right click menus that I can also turn on and off. Okay, so I can choose which items I want them to use or not. Okay. So now I've, I've gone through a process of, of simplifying the menu by right clicking and turning off the things I, I want or don't want and I click OK. And there are 10 windows that you can go through. To... Lots of windows that you could go through. So OK, I've got to do a send receive on that. Okay, so I send and receive. The reason I have to do a send and receive is so that that will send it to that person so that it will be on their computer. Now, so now they've got it. Did their menus all of a sudden change? No. When this, when this feature was first created, it actually did change the menus for that person. And I found that out because somebody had changed my menus and I opened up Paratext and it's like, wait, what? Where did everything go? What what happened? And and it was I won't name the name of the developer in case they're listening. But but everything just disappeared. And finally I figured out, you know, what had happened and we communicated in nice brotherly terms and got it straight. But we determined that that's not a good way to work where where you do it and just it just happens because No, it wasn't April 1st. So, how do I how do I turn on how do I turn on that interface? To turn it on, you hold the shift key and click on window. You hold the shift key, click on window and you see an option for simplified paratext menus. Okay. Now, in, in my case, it's grayed out because I, I had done it for Usuario. So I'm going to go back. So now, now here you can do this with me if you want. Okay. So if you want to do this for yourself, if you want to do this for yourself just as a test, so we're going to hold, go to Tools, go to Tools, Advanced, and simplify paratext menus. Tools, advanced, simplify paratext menus. S choose your name 
Choose your name and click Customize. Choose your name and click Customize. Okay, so down in the bottom it should tell you that your name is being customized. Tools, Advanced, Simplify Paratext Menus. And now you can right click. I'm going to just kind of be really, really brutal. And I'm just going to right click on all these things on mine to just give myself a truly simplified menu. So I'm just basically turning off everything that's not yellow. which is probably far more than I would ever want to do. But I want to make sure I see the results. So take a minute. I'll give you two minutes. Go through Right click on menus, turn them red. Anything that's red will be turned off. Anything that's yellow you can't turn off. So simplify the menu for yourself. I just noticed if you right click on the menu item at the top, you have to highlight right. everything in red. Right. If you highlight the top level menu, then everything below is going to be red. So if you said, well, I really want one item in that menu, then you can't highlight the top level. You've got to just individually click all of the, the ones you don't want. So if you said, I really want to be able to insert notes, but nothing else, you would have to make the, the top level would have to be white, and the rest of them individually would be red. Okay, okay has everybody had a chance to kind of turn off a few things? Then some people might be doing command click. Okay, so for those of you who are on Mac things who, who have a who are in a different world, you may be doing command click or something. However you do right click, whatever you do to do a right click. I, right clicks are funny things. Some Macs right click and some Macs don't right click and, you know. But however it is you do a right click. Every, okay, so has everybody had a chance to turn off some things? Yes, yes, teacher. Yes, Phil, okay. Go down to the bottom down here now and click OK. Go to the bottom, click OK. And then it's going to tell you you have to do a send receive. So just click OK and do a send receive. Do a send receive so that you're at this point. Okay. So click OK, do a send receive, get your files set back. Okay, once it finishes the send receive, you should have a message comes up that the send receive was complete. And you should be back in business. Now, to turn on the menu, go to win hold shift, hold shift, click on window, and simplified paratext menus should be available to you as an option. Turn it on. And it's going to tell you that certain menus are going to be hidden. Click OK. And now you should have a simplified interface. Okay, so check your menus. See if your menus are... That's okay. That's fine. Okay, click Window. Hold Shift, click Window. Hold Shift, click Window. Click on Simplified Menu. And click. Okay, now they're simplified. Right? So it, it, is not, it is not automatic that when you simplify them, they turn on. You have to be intentional. You have to be intentional to turn off the men, on the menus. You have to hold shift, click on window, turn on simplified menus. Okay? Now, did anybody read the me message about how you turn it back on? Yeah, we yeah. Said $30. <laughs> it's $30. Okay. 
$30 to get it turned back on. <laughs> Besides paying me $30. Okay, so it, most things like this are simply toggles. So if you turn it on by going shift window, then you're going to turn it back off again by doing the same thing. So if we hold shift, hold shift, go to window, you'll see simplified paratext. You see a checkbox there, click it, and it will make it inactive. So now your menus are exactly the same. Because what else do you have to do? You have to restart. You don't have to send receive, but you have to, you have to restart. This is why it's important, it's important to read the messages that show up on your screen. Sometimes we're very, very quick to see an OK button and just click OK, because that seems like the right thing to do. And if you don't read English, then you may be stuck. Okay? But in this case, it says restart paratext. So before I can get my full menus back, I need to close paratext and restart it. Okay, so I close paratext and <laughs> restart it. So we went through these steps of we went to Tools, Advanced, Simplify, we selected our name and we chose Customize, we followed the instructions, we did it, we turned on the menu by doing Shift, Window, okay, and then we turn it off by paying Phil the $30 code holding shift and clicking windows again. So again, y'all, all of you, have these instructions on your memory sticks. So in terms of how to do this, you could get it. But if you wanted to know how to simplify the paratext menus, where would you look? Help. OK. So if you said, I know Phil talked about the ability to simplify the paratext menus. I remember that, but I don't remember what he said. Go to help. Look up the help. Okay, a couple things about simplified menus. One, again, I said this before, but I say it again. Proceed with caution because you can modify the menus for team members. So don't modify team members unless you have agreed with this. Okay. Um, Typically, because one of the things that happens is, is I'm sitting here working and I'm looking at my menus and I say, well, gee, I don't have a tools menu. Well, no, I took it off of yours because I didn't think you were capable of handling it. Okay, that doesn't go over very big. Okay. But if, if the answer is, you know, look, let's talk about this and, and you guys really don't need the tools menu because there's, you know, so we're going to just take it off yours so that it makes life simple. So all you have to do is what you need. Are you okay with that? Yeah. You, you know, if you're okay with that, good, then let's do that. And that'll just make life simpler for you because you don't accidentally get caught trying to figure out where to go and we're all happy. So, we, we, you know, we, we talk about this, we work it, and then you go set up the team. When you are in that tool, when you are in that tool, one of the things that you can do is you can select a user and then you can copy that to other users. So I could say, okay, I set up Phil LaCrone's menu this way and now I'm going to copy that same setup to these other two people. So everybody on the team is going to get the same menu set. Okay. Get, remember when we were talking about the project plan? We were saying that the best thing is to get, get a base plan that you're starting with and then modify it at the area level and then modify it at the regional level and then modify it at the team level. The same thing's true here. We might want to go through and say, okay, for everybody on the team, we're going to take out tools. Okay, so we're going to share that with everybody. Now, for this person in particular, I'm also going to take this out, or I'm going to give them, you know, so then I can go back and customize that individual. But in terms of getting a starting point, 
I could say I'm going to customize everybody by changing everybody to this same thing that I just did for myself. Okay. Again, be cautious because you are changing other people's simplified menu, which if they turn it on, that's what they're going to see. Be especially careful of this because if I'm sharing with another consultant, I probably shouldn't be changing the consultant and their stuff they're doing unless we've agreed. If the consultant says, hey, Phil, would you simplify the menus for me? I saw what you did on your computer. I saw what you had simplified on yours. Would you do that for mine too? Great, I can do that. All I got to do is let me just copy mine into yours. Boom. Do a send receive. Send receive and you'll, you'll have that simplified menu too. Okay. Questions? Jim? It's, it's tied to the fact that these, these three people that I see, I'm sharing projects with, okay? So the fact, I mean, so I, I can't see, you know, I don't see you in the list. You know, you're using Paratext 8, but I'm not sharing anything with you, okay? If we started sharing a project, then your name would show up in my list. This is a paratext level because this is the interface. This isn't related to a pro. This isn't doesn't matter what project I had open. This is the interface. So if you and I were sharing a project, you know that's that's how I would get your name because we're sharing. Okay, so I could then set up this for you because you've asked me to set up your simplified menu, and the way you would get it was the fact that I shared my project back with you. So when I share, you know, when I do a send receive of that project, you would get that simplified menu. That's why it tells me I need to do a send receive. You would get that. And then when you go to simplified menus, it would simplify it. But it's simplifying it for the interface, which is not related to a project. The only it comes by way of a project being shared, but then it's, it's, it's simplified no matter what I'm looking at. Right. But I can only do that for people with whom I'm sharing projects. So again, I didn't see any of your names. None of your names showed up on my list, even though all of you have Paratext 8, because I'm not sharing. If I were logged in as Phil Lacrone, you know, Phil Lacrone, I would have hundreds of names there, because I'm sharing projects with lots of people. But you have to be an administrator to do this. This process, again, I'm going to... I think I'm I think therefore I am. <laughs> I'm going to step out and say that I don't think I actually have to be an administrator to do this. Because again, this is an interface level thing. This is an interface level thing. This is not related to my the fact that I'm administrator. Now there are there are some tasks in Paratext that you can only do if you are the administrator of at least one project. Okay. All of you are administrators of a project because you all created a project yesterday, so you're all administrators. But I, this, is, this is something that is basically being done on my computer. Now it may be, and, I, and I'm, I'm fudging here because I'm not sure, it may be that I can only change people where I'm an administrator on their project. That might be the case. That would be my feeling. That would be, that would be my guess that, that if, if, if I'm just the translator on the project, I wouldn't see your name because, you know, but I'm not 100% sure of that. So again, one way would only be to test. If you, op if you opened it up and you, you would see, you would see the names of the people that you might be able to change, okay? So again, use this with caution. But, but let's say that somebody goes out, let's say somebody on your team says, ha, I'm going to play a really cool trick you know, on Anne, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change her menus. And so they go out and they change all the menus. What happens? Nothing. Anne's never going to see it unless, you know, unless she goes and does it. Now, if Anne, if Anne closes her eyes and I come over here real quickly and I, and I go in and I turn off her menus and, I, and then I sneak, sneak away and she comes back and says, oh, what happened to my menus, you know, um, Steve, my menu's crashed. What's going on? What what happened? Did, did Phil walk into your yeah, I walked into your office. <laughs> Phil Crumlin. Is it April the first? 
It's April the 1st, May the 4th, April, May the 4th. But, but again, it's, it's something that, that you have to be very intentional. You have to be very intentional to, to do. I could see this as a real useful teaching tool when you're teaching new translators how to use paratext and they're having trouble navigating through all sorts of different menus. You turn off the ones that aren't relevant for what you're teaching about and set them up and get them practicing and doing that. That could be a really useful teaching tool. Right. A teaching tool and just even a general working tool and that right. you know and that if 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 we're not, if we're not work, we don't want to work on parallel passages. We don't want to work on biblical terms right now. We're, I mean, we'll do that. But right now, all we want to do is drafting where we want a few items. Then we can turn the other ones off. Okay. So, so again, is this useful to you? It, it just, it depends. Some of you will use it, but none of you knew this existed. Or at least you, none of you told me you knew it existed. This has been here. This has been here for 10 years. Okay. The problem is, is we don't ever teach it. Well, actually, that's not true. We teach it, but you never come to my courses. <laughs> and I've probably taught it, but you forgot. <laughs> but again, depending on the context, depending on the context of the course, it gets taught or not. And and one of the things that I wanted in this course is enough time that we could actually go through some of these things and and look at it and talk about it. So again, this. This may be something that you use, it may not. One of the, the reality is, is that, again, this, this is one of those things that most people would say, you know what, I really don't want to take time to go through this and do it. But it doesn't take all that long to, to get a base thing. And once you've got it, you could set this up for, if, you're, if you've got 10 people on the project, you could just say, okay, copy this to all 10 people. What did you but what did you click on? Okay. Right. So, okay, again, th as you're doing this simplification, there are a lot of menus. Again, because every, you know, different windows have different menus. Some like we didn't even go into the notes or the the biblical terms or some of those things. So, if someone got into biblical terms, there's menus there. So, again, what what menus do you want to turn off? So you can go through, right click, you open things, you try it. Okay. If you got into trouble, again, you hold shift, you know, to turn, you know, window to turn it off. Yesterday I had, I had shown you I had that problem where um, my thing kept trying to send a project that didn't even exist on my computer anymore. Well, one of the settings that you can also reset is this simplified menu. So if you, if you, if you're, you know, if you came back and, you know, it's like, oh, my menus, they're changed and I didn't do it and how did it get there and what, now what do I do? If you're, if something's strange with your paratext and you want to fix it, then you can do the shift reset to start where you hold shift when you start paratext and it will reset. And this is one of the settings that will get reset. Your simplified menus will get turned off and you'll go back to the standard menus. And we talked about yesterday that you answer yes to, re to resetting and no to reporting a problem because we're not reporting a problem here. And then when you start Paratext, it'll open up. Okay. Again, you can modify the menus of a teammate and when you do a send receive, then they'll get it. If I do a send receive to my memory stick, and my teammate does a send receive to the internet, are their menus going to change? No, because you got to be sending and receiving to the same same place. Okay. Now I said take a few minutes and do that. We just did it, so we're not going to take a few more minutes and do it. But again, you might want to at some point. Take some time and seriously look at, okay, what menus would I really want to draw? Or think about the team you're working with. Think about the people you're working with and say, okay, what, what 
tools, what menus do they need, so how could we simplify this for the team so that they can do what they want to do. Okay. Um, Bill? Yes. Could you just show us quickly again how you copied the simplified menus from one user to another? Sure. Okay, so if I'm in Paratext and I've, I've worked through the menus and I want to um, share that with the team, I go to Tools, Advanced, Simplify Menu, and I select my one that I customized. I customized me. So I collect, select the one that I chose to customize. And then there's an option that says Cus copy to other users. Okay? So when I click copy to other users, it's going to show me all the other users to whom I can copy things. Okay? And this may be related to who I'm an administrator of. Hopefully it is. Okay? So I can, should be able to copy then. So you may or may not, in Paratext 8, in Paratext 8, you may or may not have anybody because you may not have been sharing a project with anybody yet. Okay? As we get into working with our projects and working with the teams, then you'll see other names there. So then I can choose and say, okay, well, I do, I do want to send this to Phil Lacrone. I don't want to do it to Uswadio because you know, I'm going to do it to Phil Lacrone. Click OK. And again, I have to do a send receive. And this is how Phil Lacrone is going to get it. So I do the send receive, send the project. Well, I, I send projects. Now, here, this, this probably has to make, we have to make sure we're clear here. I'm sharing projects with Phil Lacrone. The question is, is one of the ones that I did a send receive of ones that Phil Lacrone is on? Okay? Because when I go to do the send receive, let me go back. When I go to do the send receive, um, right here it doesn't tell me which project Phil Lacrone's on. So if 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 I if I only have checked the MP1 project and I do a send receive, I am doing a send receive. But if Phil Lacrone is not on that project, then he's not going to get these changes. Okay. So you have to make sure that a project that Phil Lacrone is on, you're doing send receive. That way it goes to him. Okay. And I quite honestly don't know if Paratext actually checks that and says, oh, you didn't have one selected that Phil Lacrone is on. Because sending and receiving is tricky. You, you, sometimes you say, I don't, I don't want to send this project today. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to send or something. But you, so you want to make sure if, if Phil Lacrone is on JACU8, then you need to make sure you send that to him so that he gets it. And that way it'll be on his computer as well. Other questions? Okay. So so I can so what I want you to capture here, we you know, we capture the fact that the interface has a whole bunch of menus and things. I can simplify those. You can simplify those. Okay, so we can get it down to a, 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 an easier set, and then later on we can say, okay, you know what? Now, now we're ready. We're going to bring in the biblical terms. So I could go back in, modify the the simplified menus, add the biblical terms in there, do a send receive, cop, you know, copy it to everybody, do a send receive, and say, everybody, turn your menus on and off, turn them back on again. And now everybody will have the biblical terms menu as well. Okay? So we can, we can go through that. All right. I don't know why this doesn't have a menu up there. If you, one of your translators is a little more adept and wants to move on, so if he wants to do biblical terms on the, on the book that you've assigned to him, that you've already kind of shut the, a lot of this stuff down, can he? Himself? Everyone can do their own menus. Yeah, so he... You can always do your own menu. Okay. You, just you just have to know how. And, you know, so if you've taken the course or if you watch the video, <laughs> then you'll know how. But anybody can do their own menu. But ultimately, if, if you, if, if, you know, if we're, so we're in this condition that Ann's saying, we're, we're doing a workshop and we, we say everybody turn on these simplified menus. So nobody has 
these things and you say, oh, I want them, well, you just go turn them off. Just say Windows, Shift, turn off simplified menus, restart Paratext, and you've got all the menus. Okay. So, again, this is not a, this is not a, it's, you know, permanent thing, you're, you're, you know. Except that I can go say turn it off. I can do well, you could turn it off, but you got right, but I could go back and change it again. Or put or you know so or it modifies I want. So 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 for this workshop we said okay let's let's do a totally simple work you know menu. Okay, so my simplified menu is almost bare bones. And I say oh well I I really want to be able to work with the biblical terms. So I can come back come back to paratext go back into tools advanced simplify menus choose my user and then I can come back and say okay I want to be able to do biblical terms I don't want these other things so now I'm, I'm still gonna have to I'm still going to have to turn off the things that I don't want, but I do want biblical terms, so I'm, so I'm just turning off. Now, the problem is now, if I want some things on the advanced menu, you know, I have to turn on all the, the tools. But, you know, and so I do want biblical term renderings as well. So now I've turned on biblical term rent, you know, so now I've, you know, I've modified it. So I can modify it anytime I want. Right, it says Ann White Customize. So you click on it. That's your, that Ann White has already been, got a customize, so you'd click that, and you'd say, OK, customize. Oh, customize. And then it brings you back, and it lets you. So you can, you can always go back in there and do it again. But the fact that I've customized it now, why aren't my menus changed? I did a send receive. Why aren't my menus changed? Because I've got to turn it on. Yeah, you got to turn it on. I mean, it's not an automatic thing. And if, and I, and I'm pretty sure that if I just change it under the hood, if I'm in Simplified and I change it, I don't know that that'll change it. I think you actually have to turn it back off, then turn it back on to change it. Yeah, I can't seem to turn it back off. Click OK. Okay, so now is it on right now? The the. Yes, it's okay. on. Okay, so go to Window and hold Shift, Window, and take it off. Take it off. Click OK. Okay. And restart Paratext. Uh, because it right. see the message the message there the message there says you have to restart Paratext. I don't have any message. Well, you just clicked OK. <laughs> the message the message that you clicked OK on. The message you clicked OK on, the one that I said, make sure you read the message, that one said restart paratext. OK. Oh, OK. Moving along. Moving along. All right. So we've talked about menus. Now let's, let's do this thing together here. We want to close all the windows that are open. So close everything. Again, if you've got a blank. If you've got that blank combination, you can just blank things out. But close all your windows, okay, and open the ZZ Test 99 project. And you might say to me, but Phil, that's the only window I had open. Well, this is good practice. This is good practice in closing and opening projects. Okay, so open ZZ Test 99. What do you mean you don't have a closure anymore? Okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Just ZZ Test 99. Do you have that? Yeah, it's okay. here. Okay. Okay, ZZ Test 99. We're going to be using ZZ Test 99 a lot today. So, okay. How can you change? How can you change? You've got this one project open. How can you change it from ZZ Test 99 to MWEBFT? Okay, so I have, I have ZZ Test 99 open. How can I change what I'm looking at from ZZ Test 99 to MW? Well, when you're in when you're in that one and you do open project and put in pick the other one, then that one will show up and this one will disappear. 
Okay, so Ann says, if I go to File Open and I choose the MW, that MW will open and this one will disappear. Did, it, did ZZ Test 99 disappear? No. no. Okay, so that was not the right answer. That was the wrong answer. Okay, there's a drop down menu. So, if I have a project open, if I have a project open, and I want to change what I'm looking at, there's a drop down right here to the left of the book name that shows me the projects and the resources that I have on my computer. So, when I want to change, when I want to change a project, then I can use that drop down to select what it is I want to work with. Okay. This, for some of you, this is going to sound very basic. For some of you, you're going to go, oh, I've always just closed every and open. And then, so, that's why, in some cases, people have 15 windows open on their computer because they just keep going to file open and opening another window. Okay. And you don't have to do that. To change it, to change the open project, you click on the project, drop down, click modify. Okay, click the project you want. So you, Mary, you're looking perplexed. He doesn't have any little red X's on his thing, so. Does it, what do you mean he doesn't have any red X's? Is he in the, is he full window view? So. Let me, let me see just a second. He couldn't close down his. Okay, because we're still in, uh, hold shift, hold shift for me, hold the shift key. We're still in simplified menus, and okay, let go, and let's open up Paratext 8. Okay, that was the problem. And so now there's his X's. Okay. Okay. So... What happened, what happened there was that in the simplified menu, one of the items, one of the menu items in under file is close. Okay? Close means close the active window. Exit, exit means exit the program. Okay? If you turn off the close menu, if you disable the close menu in simplified menus, what you're doing is disabling the ability to close the window. Now, listen, listen, what a great idea. Because you want the team to have these three windows open. And you don't want them to close those three windows. So if you disable close, that's what's going to be on their screen. Okay? Okay? So, you know, again, you got to decide. But if, if you want the team to always open up with the same thing and you don't want them to accidentally close, because when you close the window, then it restarts in Matthew and, you know, it's like where... Okay, so if you turn, if you disable close, but, but when you disable close and you're in simplified menus, then you get this situation where you couldn't, you couldn't fix it because you disabled it. You, you turned it off by the simplified menus. Good learning opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for presenting that. That was a setup. I had Kaviti do that so that we could. <laughs> okay. So, so where was I? Okay. So to change what's open, I simply click on the drop down and look for the file that I want to change it to. So that changes that changes the project that's currently open. Okay. How can you open both projects at the same time, Anne? <laughs> the way you told me to. Okay, so if I want... I've actually done both. I mean, I, I've, I've heard it both ways, yes. Okay. But I've actually, I mean, I've actually used the right way to change it. Yes, yes. Just, you, just were, you, were giving, you were a step ahead of me. You were a step ahead of me. You were a step ahead of me. Okay, so to open up multiple, to multiple, if I say, okay, I want, I want the ZZ test and the MW, 
then I can go to File, Open. And again, I'm not talking, I'm, I'm, I'm not going through the fact that there are icons, but remember, when I'm on this menu, when I'm on this menu, the menu shows me that there's an icon that can be used here, and it also shows me there's a shortcut that can be used here. Okay? Okay, so I'm, we're not going to spend a lot of time there, but I just want you to, again, remember that, that, that that's there. So if I open a resource, I can, I can choose. Now, so I can have two open. Now, I went to File Open Resource. Paratext 8, this window has changed because now it's showing me not only the Paratext 8 projects, but it's showing me the Paratext 7 projects if... I click on Show Paratext 7 Projects at the bottom. Okay, so I have to know what I'm looking at. If it looks to me like I've got, I don't remember having that project in my Paratext 8, maybe I'm showing Paratext 7. Why are some of these gray? Because they haven't been migrated. They haven't been migrated, but, but they're gray, so how could I migrate them? Okay, if I click it, it's gray. I can't click it. Why do you think a project that's in Paratext 7 that hasn't been migrated might be gray for me? Because I'm not the administrator or consultant on the project. Okay? And if I'm not the administrator of the project, then I can't bring it over, okay? Okay, I can't migrate it, okay? I can't migrate it. So some of these have in parentheses seven unregistered. So it's also in Paratext 7, and I can migrate it because it's black. But if I'm not in a role that allows me to do the migration, then it's going to be it's going to be gray. Why, why did they choose to allow a consultant to migrate it? I mean, I've got some projects here that I'm a consultant on, but I don't have any editing privileges. Right, and, and I wouldn't dare touch those. Projects. Right, and so hopefully you won't. But there are many situations. There are many situations where the administrator is the lead person on the team, so they're the administrator, but they really depend on the consultants to help provide technical expertise for the project. So in that case, the, the consultant might be the one who helps do the migration rather than the, the, the administrator. Now the fact, the fact remains, yes, some consultants wouldn't be involved there, but they had to pick a way to, to, to be a happy medium. So, so in that case, if you've got that role, you can consult. Okay, I'm turning off. Yeah, Jim. I was going to say, if you click on a, a black one that's version 7, it's going to ask you if you want to migrate? Right. Okay. Right. So remember, this, this is what we spent a whole day on. But yes, if you click one that's black, it's going to say, you know, do you want to register it? Do you want to migrate it? You know, it can take you through that process. Okay. When I turn off the 7, so I'm, I'm not seeing the 7 projects now. I'm just seeing the the eight. I'm just seeing the eight. Um, this window has several columns. And this list can be sorted by those columns. So for instance, I could say I want to see the languages sorted by or the projects sorted by language and it will sort. Now, this gets a little bit tricky in Paratext 8 because now I've got like five different flavors of English. If you'll notice at the very top, the NIV 11 is American English. A bunch of the other translations are just English. And then I've got some that are English KGV, English HBK. So sorting by language, you have to be a little bit careful because there can be variants on the language. I can also sort by the type of project it is so that I can see which of these projects is, projects is, 
which of these projects are resources, which ones are standard translations, which ones are back translations, etc. Okay? So sorting by the project type can be really helpful if I'm saying I want to find all the ones that are, are, are resources, for instance. I can also sort by versification and versification really comes in handy when I'm thinking about doing something like interlinear and I want to use the same versification for my project and the host project. Okay? So sometimes I say, gee, this, this thing doesn't seem to work right. Well, it's because this one is versified by the original setting and this one's versified by English, which has mostly to do with the Old Testament processes, but it does impact a few verses in the New Testament as well. We talked about the other day the fact that when you open resources you can select different things. So if I sort this by name and I'm going to say I want to open several projects, I can hold the control key, I can hold control and select multiple projects that I'm going to open all at one time. Okay. Now, if, if I regularly want to open these projects, okay, if I regularly want to open these projects, then one of the things that I can do in the upper left is I can save this so that I have a saved set of selections. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to call this My Stuff. Okay. If I call this My Stuff, what happens in six months when I go back to use My Stuff? I probably won't even remember what it is. Okay. What, what's My Stuff? Okay. So, typically, I want to choose a name that's going to be reflective enough for me to remember. So, I might call this the ZZ Projects, or give it some name. I might even want to list out kind of what the projects are if I'm opening two or three, but I, I give it a name that's going to be reflective enough so that I can keep track of it. Okay. If that, if that reflects for me what the, what, the projects, what the projects are, because it's not exegesis of... The problem with exegesis of Romans is that it doesn't open to Romans, it's opening projects. So, so what are the projects? You know, what name do I want to give? Lynn? What's the value of that over a saved text combination? That's a good question. And we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, yeah, this is one of those Linux things, sorry. Linux, sorry for those of you who are using Linux who are wondering what we're doing. Uh, it's not, he's, he's, on, he's, he's using Linux on a Mac. There is no Mac version of Paratext, so you either have to do it with Windows or Linux. Unfortunately, the Linux version does not have this feature, so sorry, get a Windows Paratext. You're on, a virtual, you're on a virtual machine anyway, you know, so just use the virtual windows. Okay, so I have to click on the save icon. I have to click on the save icon to save this. When I click the save icon, that becomes an option that I can choose, and I click OK. I click OK, and Paratext will open those windows for me and it opens up those, all those windows, and it puts it in the combination that I've happened to share. Now, we haven't gotten yet to how do I save those combinations. We'll get there. Lynn's asking, why not use a text collection? We'll get there. Okay? What I want you to capture is, is that there's a way to say, I have several projects that I want to be able to open, and I choose to open them by going to File, 
open project resource. And when I click on this drop down, I can see the combinations that I've saved in the past. And so I click that and it opens. Now, notice that if I open it again, it just keeps opening more of those windows. Okay? And so if I said open this and I say file, open, when I open projects, it's not closing the things that are already on my screen. It's just opening more projects. And so all of a sudden, I've got way too much. I could go through and click on the X's, but because I saved a blank combination, I can just close all those down and say, OK, I only want them opened once, so let me go back and open again. Why would you want to open up several projects? And we'll talk about the text collection in a minute. But one of the reasons that sometimes someone will want to have multiple projects open is to be able to compare what the markers and things are on all of these all at one time. Okay, so I can see the markers, I can see the markers in each of these different projects. Where in a text collection, I can only see the one verse at a time. In a text collection, I can only see one verse at a time except for the passage that's open, and we'll see that in a minute. But um, you know, but that's that's where we go. All right. Now, what can paratext what can Paratext do for me? What, why are we using Paratext? What can Paratext do for me? Or what tools are available? This is not a rhetorical question. Why use Paratext? Why not just do this in Microsoft Word? Because in Microsoft Word, I can edit the text. What can Paratext do for me? Okay, so it allows me to see other resources in parallel with my text, okay? What else can it do for me? Formatting is easier. Okay, it provides a, a structure for format. It helps your teammates to see everything that you see. Okay, it allows me to share my information with teammates so that we all can see the same thing. Okay, it can, it can link, I can link with a back translation very directly and it can show me biblical terms that are in my project. Gives you an easy way to back it up. Gives me a way to um, secure it, to back it up. I, I can send it up to the internet and it's backed up. What other tools does Paratext have? Spell it has spell checks. Measures progress. It, it measures progress. It does all sorts of checking. Does parallel passages. Okay, there's all sorts of things. There's all well, you know, it 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 doesn't make my it doesn't make my lunch. But but Paratext does all sorts of things. Paratext, it, Paratext is this huge Swiss Army knife of tools. Okay, but when we're talking about the interface, because that's really what we're talking about this morning. When we're talking about the interface, some of those tools act differently. Okay, there's lots of different types of windows. But some of them open inside of paratext. They open inside of paratext, like notes, interlinear. So when I'm in paratext, and I'm going to close things down here. Okay, when I'm in paratext, and if I go to File, Open Notes, those notes are opened right here in paratext. I can't. I can't take them outside of paratext. They're inside of paratext, okay? And they kind of sit in here next to my other project. If I open the interlinearizer, it opens up right here in paratext. If I open the biblical terms tool, the renderings, they open up right inside here and they kind of sit. I can't, I can't take it out of paratext. I can't get it outside, okay? So some tools that we have open up inside of paratext. Some tools 
open up and you can move them outside of paratext, like the biblical terms or the word list. So if I open up the word list, it opens up this window. I can actually take this completely out of paratext and stick it on another screen. So you guys can't see it right now, but it's on this screen over here. For those of you who are watching online, I'm pointing to my notebook instead of to the other screen. So I've actually moved that window completely out, okay? which is wonderful if I've got multiple screens. But so that window, that tool, acts differently from the text collection or the notes. Okay. The same thing is true of the biblical terms, that they open up and I can move them out. So some windows open and move out of paratext. Some of the tools that we use in paratext open up under the file menu. So if you click on file, if you click on file in paratext, you'll see a series of things that say open notes, open interlinearizer, open source language text, open dictionaries. All of those tools that we want to use open up under the file menu. Some of the tools open up under the tools menu. Okay? Which the, the developers, I think, were in a mode of, of trying to keep us you know, on our toes. Okay? And so they put some under file menu, some under tools menu. The interface is being examined and trying to figure out how to best do it. But this is what we live with right now. This is what we've got. So some of them, like the parallel passages and the word list and biblical tools open up under the tools menu. Okay. Some of them open up under the project menu. So when we talk about assignments, when we talk about the project plan, when we talk about the project history, those all open up under the project menu. Okay. So we've got different tools in Paratext that open in different places. How can you remember where they open? I don't have a good I don't I don't have a good answer for how you can remember that. Okay. But 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 one option is is you click and try. Now again, remember remember that the menus change. So if you don't have a project open, you may not see all the same menus, or they may be gray because you don't have something open, because they're smart. But the menus, there's lots of different things. Some tools are specific to the project that's open. Okay, so, for instance, if you open up the biblical terms, or the word list, or the project history, when you open project history open, it's going to open specific to the project that you have selected. This messes me up all the time. Because I click on checking and I end up checking the NIV. <laughs> How many of you have checked the NIV before? You know? How many of you have checked the Spanish, you know, and made sure the Spanish is right? Okay? Because the because the window opens specific to the project that you're in. Some tools open in general, okay? So, like text collections, text collections aren't related to a project. You know, it doesn't matter what project's open, when you go open a text collection, it's going to open that text collection. You could make a text collection that's specific to a project. Okay, so you could say, for this project, I want this text collection. Okay, but, um, but so some things are, are just general, and they just open for everybody. The source language tools, they're not specific to a project. They just open up to whatever. Some tools, you can change the project. So if you open the biblical terms tool, it opens to a project, but you could say, I want to switch and look at a different project. So you can change what project's being examined. Okay. Some windows won't let you do anything else as long as that window's open. We saw that yesterday with the assignments in progress, I think. That if assignments in progress is open, you can't go to paratext and be doing stuff. You can't muck with it. You have to close the assignments and window and progress window, and then you can go back and do stuff in paratext. 
So there's lots of different types of windows. Okay? There's lots of different types of windows. And so, you know, trying to keep track of that can be a challenge. So again, what could you do? Well, one is you could simplify your life by saying, I'm going to disable some of these menus so that I don't open accidentally this thing that I don't want to see. Okay. But what did I write there? Keep notes, do internalization. Oh, what can you do with paratext? That's what, that's what I was getting at. So what can I do with paratext? Okay. With paratext, I can just do, do just about anything because there's lots of tools in paratext. Okay. In paratext, <coughs> I can write my notes. I don't have to have a piece of paper. I can write my notes right in paratext. I can do interlinearization. I can check the biblical terms. I can verify the word list. I can edit the text. I can compare the text. I can et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Paratext allows me to do just about everything that I need to do with the text. And then there's always somebody who says, well, but can it make my cheese sandwich? Would you, you, know, would you develop the interface so it'll make my cheese sandwich? We could probably consider that, but, but, but it would have to go in the list of the other 3,000 things that people have asked for where they say, okay, but I want, I want it to turn green when I you know, open up mine. Okay? I want you know, a different feature. Lots of different features that people want. We've got what we've got right now. Okay? But again, it's a huge Swiss Army knife. That's what it is. It's a huge Swiss Army knife. And if you pull out your Swiss Army knife, which I just happen to have a huge one here, okay, it's my huge Swiss Army knife, it's important for me to know that if I pull this thing out, I can't use this as tweezers. Why can't I use it as tweezers? Because it only has one side. Okay, so that tool is not going to work for me. <coughs> If I want tweezers, I got to pull out the other one that has two little prongs. So now I can use this as tweezers. So I have to know what my tools are. How do I learn what these tools are? You come to a workshop. <laughs> you come to a workshop on Swiss Army. You come to a workshop on Swiss Army knives. Well, the, that, the reality is all of us learn differently. For some people, for some people, if I gave you this, you'd go, oh, 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 look at this. Oh, look at, oh, I, oh, oh, I just cut my finger. That was sharp. Okay. Oh, that was the wrong one. Okay. What is, what does this do? Oh, I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can open a car with that. Eh, okay. You know, I mean, so, some people are going to get this and they're going to just, by the way, for those of you out there, you don't see me. I've got a Swiss army knife on. Oh, <coughs> tell you what, we have the ability to do webcam. So, okay. So never mind webcam from here. So there we go. Okay. Webcam's not working. Sorry, guys. Okay. We're just going to go screen capture. So anyway, I have a screen, uh, a web, what's this army knife? Um, so some people are going to feel comfortable just saying, let me just, let me just try it. Some people are going to get it and go, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should open that because if I open it, it might cut me, so I'm not going to, I'm, you know, would you open it for me, Mary? <laughs> Mary says no. Okay, so Mary's one of the, Mary, you know, again, you know, but, so we all have different learning styles, and, and particularly with technology, we all have different tolerances. So for some people, it's kind of like, well, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to click on file text collection, because that might, something might happen. But bottom line, if, if paratext is going to do something dangerous to your data, it will tell you, are you sure you want to delete this project entirely? And the right answer is, okay. yes. yes, yes, delete it. There, perhaps, again, you've got to know. You've got to know what you're doing. But, but in general, it's not going to you know, do something. So if you're not sure, click on Open Notes and see what happens when you do that. Okay? So, We've got lots of things. It's a Swiss Army knife of tools. And now, because I clicked on a different window, it won't go there. OK. 
Okay? So, again, I, I have to kind of know how to get there. Now, we just a minute ago, we opened up a whole bunch of projects. We opened up a whole bunch of projects, and had, I had them filling my whole screen. Sometimes that's way too much. I don't want to have all these projects filling my screen. So instead of having all of those projects open in a whole bunch of screens, Lynn had suggested, well, what about a collection of texts? And come on, why are you not? Oh. Actually, I think Lynn was asking about the Windows configuration. Well, there's a Windows configuration, too. That's a different thing. But we'll get to both of them. We'll get to both of them. But under File, under File, I have an option to open a project in a text collection. We opened projects from the Open Project menu a, minute, a second ago. But under File, there's an option to open a project or resource in a text collection. A text collection is a special type of window. How many of you used text collections before? Okay, Most of you have used it, so this is not, not anything really new. But maybe for the, some people out there on the, the um, stream, this would be new. But if I choose Open Resource in Text Collection, what I see on the left-hand side is all the projects and resources I have in my, my Paratext. Now, this window doesn't look like the one that I saw when I went to Open Project, right? Looks different. On the Open Project, I had all those columns, okay? Now I've got something that says, take what's on the left, go to the right. And if I click on the drop-down, I don't see my ZZ projects that I had created before. Because this is a different type of collection. Linux has it. Linux has it. All right. Linux has text collection, so we're good to go. So this is, a, again, a, a kind of a standard Windows configuration that if I want to put, a, put something in here, I can. So I'm going to sort this by language, and I see... I see for myself a whole bunch of English translations here. So I'm going to click one and click the let right arrow. And notice that it moves it to the right. Or I can just simply double click and move it. So I'm going to just double click and I'm going to move all of the, for me, the English translations. Okay, so now. I have something that has all the English translations on the right hand side. Everybody with me? Okay. Yeah. Is the, handbook in there? I can't the handbook's at the bottom. Good. Okay. That's now, again, just like I did with the save with the open project, I could save a collection here. I'm going to call this English text. Okay. I'm going to give it a name. Because one of the things here that happens is often I want to go back and reuse at various times this collection. I want to be able to do something with this later. So I save it. I've got to make sure I click on Save It and click OK. And what this is going to do is this is going to open for me one window that has the current verse of all of those texts. And now it's time for our break, and when we come back, we'll play with this a little bit more. So let's take a break now, and we will come back at 10.15.